when I used to get a thought before I felt like a victim, I was thinking about suicide and I probably wasn't as honest as I should have been at the beginning. But now I'm thinking, okay, I've got some choices of whether I believe it, whether I reject it, whether I use the stop process. If I met me, um, I'd think, you know what, you're okay. I, I actually quite like you. This is In Therapy with Alex Howard, a first of its kind series that places you directly in the therapy room. My name is Alex Howard, and it is my hope that by bringing you on the journey with us, you too can learn the tools to transform your life. This series, we're following Haley, whose traumatic upbringing has resulted in severe depression and anxiety, as well as debilitating obsessive compulsive disorder. Haley has come to in therapy because she's decided enough is enough and wants to live the rest of her life free from the constraints of the past. How has it been for you reading the comments? I literally exclaimed, holy shit. Yeah. This lady is badass. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love that. The tendency after a while is going to be to start to go into a bit of a, a kind of cruise mode, a maintenance mode with it. But it's one of those things that if you're not actively working on it, yeah. it'll slip back. Yeah. Join us each week as we follow every step of Haley's journey, both in and outside of the therapy room. As well as the tools I give Haley in the sessions, I'll also be sharing weekly top tips so you can begin to unlock your true potential. This is In Therapy. I've been posting some quite sort of sad, tough uh, videos lately and looking a little bit um, like I'm thinking. <laughs> it's the anniversary of the day that I lost my horse today. So it's a really tough day. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry, but it's just been really rubbish at the moment. Um, oh, um, I've always got a sense of loneliness inside and I'm always aching for the family that I never had. And the loneliness is ridiculously painful. Yeah, I'm really trying to pull these techniques in because it's got really hard just now. I'm, I'm doing okay, really. Uh, but I've employed lots of techniques that Alex has given me. And the biggest thing I'm noticing is that whilst I'm dipping into low moods and stuff, uh, what I am noticing is that um, I recognise that they pass and change. So before meeting with Alex and employing Alex's techniques, I used to think I was stuck in those forever. But the thing I'm most aware of now is that I go through the mood and come out the other side so there's a, an impermanent to it so what 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 can I do to, to make me feel better you know instead of sitting in a stupor um, the techniques I used to use like going jogging and playing badminton are cards uh, but but that's okay because there's other things that I'm pulling out now it's right it's not okay but but I will make it okay and, and you know so I'm feeling better about myself I'm aware that the low moods don't stay forever and they move and they're still tough when I go through them. Um, but some of the techniques I've been employing um, is, um, which I wouldn't have thought of before, is um, not beating myself up, that's the biggest one. And I like the inner critic wants to say, you failed, you're having low days and stuff, but that's rubbish. Um, I'm like coming out fighting and I'm, I'm tired but I'm fighting and it's okay. I've got weird things behind me, I'll come to that, it's very exciting. So prop, Prop number one, okay, <laughs> this is weird. This is my desire to be a childhood um, TV programme presenter coming out because I always wanted to present children's programmes. So prop number one. <laughs> okay, so this is my first technique. <laughs> and it's uh, got some other bits, okay. Hang on. Um, I'm a tomboy um, and I've never made anything in my life and it irritates me sitting down. I'm, I'm a running around kind of person. But whilst my knee is not too good, I've had to cultivate a new passion, which is uh, embroidering. So I'm working on that. And look, if you never try, you don't know if you like it or not. And I'll probably never do it again. But new interest, number one. Oh no, that's wrong. <laughs> Hang on, why is it now? Oh my goodness. I can play London's Pony. 
but I've forgotten it. Hang on. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you get the gist. I'm going to practice the recorder because I used to play at school. I can't believe I can't do that. I've just been doing it. Pressure. You get really rubbish days. And I've learned to pull out the fun. Yeah? Uh, meditation. Uh, so I've been trying meditation. This is what this weird setup is behind me. Um, I can't close my eyes and do breathing meditation because we might as well be in MRI scanners for my heart, which I'm always in because of my heart attack. So I have to candle stare and, and this coloured paper just shuts off the stimulating environment. So what I do is the light candles stare at the flame and it just calms me. And the most exciting bit is if this falls over and catches fire on the paper. Uh, so I've been doing mindful meditation every day. Okay, I'm gonna go really quick now because I'm boring myself. Next one, uh, I've been spending time with friends um, and I've got a wedding tomorrow, which is amazing because it's gonna make me cry. Um, tell you, I really value people and I absolutely adore them. I'm going to a wedding tomorrow with some friends. Um, and yeah, I couldn't survive without them. Look, I haven't managed this yet. I haven't managed the holidays yet. But look, it's in the pipeline. I've got a brochure. Uh, I'm gonna go. I, I just, uh, I'm doing okay. I just wanted to put some positives to show I'm trying. Bye. Bye. Two months have passed since Hayley and I last had a session together. This is the longest gap we've had between oh, sessions. No, no. And I'm not sure who's more eager to find out how Haley's been getting on, me or my producers. Oliver and Jeremiah greet Haley as she enters the building. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Um, I've, I've been up um, all, um, all day and all night and all day. So okay. if, if anything gibberish comes out, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but um, Not at all. Sort of when I first walked in here a few months ago, I said I didn't know I was going to articulate my issues. And so I'm sort of coming in here now a few months later and I don't know how I'm going to articulate the changes. Right. So even though I'm speaking like sort of probably because I'm so tired, I'm all over the place. Um, it's just so many things have changed. So apologies for not making sense. That no, is well, tiredness. Of course, yeah. but also, I think I said to you on your first session, yeah. don't worry too much about it because obviously yeah. Alex will help and yeah. you know, we'll, um, yeah. we'll talk through them you know, yeah. one at a time. So yeah. don't worry about so, going, we're up and getting yeah. it all out. <laughs> but um, like I, I sort of came into this process and I was thinking, this is going to be really hard because... I'm going to have to make up that I've improved just so people believe in counselling and because I really like this guy, I'm going to have to make it up. That I'm, okay. And I'm actually, I'm like, well, I, I don't have to make it up, which is, you know, like for someone that's had issues for so long, um, is a miracle. I'm not saying everything's ace. I'm sure, I'm yeah, sure there's a million things still wrong. But um, there is a shift in the way that I see myself, the world, and other people. And like I think Alex said, you can't, once you see that, you can't unsee it. And I have a million issues, and it's going to be a million days where I'm going to feel broken and cry and stuff. But um, it's it, it's just a really profound change. It still needs work on, but really positive. If I had been with you guys and I'd been going through this process with someone else, I would have probably walked out. And I have to put an emphasis on the sort of Alex's way of being and yourselves and the support because I think people don't realise that they've got to click with the right therapist. And if they don't, the stuff isn't going to land because it's hard stuff. Um, so Alex's material is brilliant, but also you have to credit into that, the privilege of working with you three guys. You have to not edit that bit out. <laughs> You've got to leave that bit in. Are you kidding <laughs> That's, 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 that's definitely that's making fair. it in. I'm not editing yeah. that bit out. Even as I enter the room, I can already feel there's a marked change in Haley. In the first part of the session, we discuss how the last two months have been, specifically what she's learnt about herself, and also how it's been to watch some of her episodes and see the positive comments. Here's the session. Like when I used to get a thought before, I felt like a victim. 
and I felt like there was nothing I could do with it. I get a thought now and, you know, it's still tough. It's still tough. It's important to be real. But now I'm thinking, okay, I've got some choices of whether I believe it, whether I reject it, whether I use the stop process. And I'm, I'm actually, I actually, if I met me, um, I'd, I'd think, you know what, you're okay. I, I actually quite like you, which is extraordinary because I couldn't tell you before how much I hated myself. You know, I I, I made a list of stuff that I like about myself because I felt it was important to do it, to challenge the stuff, the negativity. And what, I'm really curious what was on that list. Yeah, kind of, um, yeah. I was, my inner critic saying, now you're being arrogant, but I'm going to bat it away. You tell it to fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I kind of, you know, it's important to counteract all the negativity that I've had by saying these positives. So I'm going to say, I, I like that I... Um, I like that I, I interact with people and I like that I like people and I think I'm, I, I'm, I care about people. I like that I care about people and I like that I'm interested in people and I like that I kind of find funny in difficult situations um, and, and, and just um, I like that I don't give up. You know, and and it's, it, I, like me, any critic saying shut up, you're being arrogant. But I, I am going to say just back down because I need to say these things to myself yeah. that that I'm okay, and you know, um, I think I'm okay. Yes. And 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 um, I'm going to throw it out to you guys, like I just said to Oliver, um, thank you for helping me in that process. Um, I used to think that everybody hates me, but I was like, I really feel that you guys really cared and that you, you know, really rooting for me and believe in me. And it was just like, I just said to Oliver before, like I had heart surgery and people saved my life. But I think that you guys have saved my life because I was, I was thinking about suicide and I probably wasn't as honest as I should have been at the beginning. Um, but I was thinking as soon as something happens to my parents, I'm gone. And now if I get that thought again, I'm going to, look at a picture of you and say, I owe it to these guys to keep fighting, but I owe it to myself. That's which, the thing, you ultimately yeah, owe it to you. To myself, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's going to be dark days. There's going to be days where I'm really bad, but I'm I kind of, I, I'm going to look historically at the times when I pulled through when I shouldn't, which includes the heart attack, which includes the marathons, which includes the loss of my pets, which, which includes the really dark, hopeless days. And I'm going to throw back to them and, um, think I got through that, and and you you helped me to see that I got through that. Um, but you, I, I know you you may well say that I did the work, but I'm going to throw that back to you and say that you did the work. Were you going I think, to say that? I think we both we both did, the, did work. the work. Yeah. How I think about it is, you know, my job is to show up and to bring the best of what I know, and to bring my my present, to bring my heart, to bring my mind into the process. But something's wrong if I'm working harder than the person I'm working with. Because I should never want it more than they do for them because it's it's your life. Mm -hmm. But I always felt, I've always felt in the work that we've, do, we've, we've done that, that my job has been to help support, but you made the decision to be here. You made the decision to do the work between the sessions. You made the decision to be willing to let me challenge you on things and see things that were hard to see. And so I don't think it's about trying to sort of decide, you know, who did the best job. I I, I think what it's about, it, yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think. I think what it's about is, you know, this process, and I mean more broadly than this, I mean, the, the therapeutic journey is is an invitation and it's a collaboration, but the real work has to happen on the behalf of the participant because if the therapist is doing doing the work it's never going to yeah. it's not going to last because once you finish the session it, it stops yeah and i, and I feel you, you you're doing the work yeah yeah and, it, and it's um sort of i did watch some bits back it's hard to watch isn't it i did watch some bits back um and you realize that um i literally haven't started to make the changes yet um, I, I've done some, but you realise there's so much 
so much more in the sessions that I need to do. So I've done done some, but you can go back over them and every time you watch them, you can pick more out of it, of things that I need to do. So it's almost like when you're sort of in this environment, it's 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 I'm always here tired and it is an unusual environment and you're kind of wired. And when you go out, I don't even know what I've said. Mm. But when you watch it back, it's like a gift because it's like, okay, now I can sort to do the real work to, to watch it back and go through the reset program again yeah. go through all of it again and, and start start it properly so i have done loads that's but, great and, and, and also you know it's a it's a process that hits us in different ways at different times and it hits mm. us on different levels yeah. and so you can come out of a session and not really know what you said not really know what i said yeah but something can feel different like something's shifted or yeah. something's moved or we're left with a reflection and, and we're really thinking about something and the penny drops a day later, a week later, a month later. Yeah. Sometimes it drops a year later, yeah. you know, and and that's that's just, that's how it goes. Yeah. And, and I think one of the things that is quite unique about about this process is you get to rewatch things. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you, you will hear different things each time. You know, I yeah. remember early on in, in my own journey, and I used to listen to, it was tape sets back in those days, I used to listen to certain tape sets again and again. And I'd hear different things each time. And there'd yeah. be times I'd be like, I swear that wasn't on the tape yeah, last time. Like weird. someone's got in and re-recorded the tape yeah. that's been sat in my, in my, yeah. in my cupboard. But it's it's because we're, as we grow, yeah. we hear different things and things land differently totally. as well. Totally, 100%. How has it been for you reading the comments? In fact, I print I printed off some of the comments because I, want, yeah. I I know you've seen some of these and the, yeah. this is this is only a few of them, and there are I mean there are hundreds yeah, of yeah. comments, yeah. but some of the ones that I printed off just to to bring a few because it's also quite nice for the people that watch the episodes to also know that they have an impact on you yeah. as well. Yeah. And so one one of the comments which was Luby Laboti, I think it was. <laughs> um, when Haley talked about how she could either become a recluse again or go out and run marathons, so she chose to run marathons and essentially told the anxiety and panic attacks to fuck off, I literally exclaimed, holy shit, yeah. this lady is badass. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Janet said, Haley is gutsy. Here mm. she is showing up for herself. And that takes a lot of guts. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting a lot out of these episodes. Yeah. Another one was, Helena said, Haley, I admire you so much for your courage in allowing us into these sessions. And then she goes on to say, it's giving me the words to use when discussing with my own therapist. I can't thank you enough. Yeah. Another one was, uh, Kristen says, looking forward to the rest of Haley's journey. I wanted to hug her so much yeah. towards the end. I'm ready to pop the champagne oh. when she figures out she is so incredibly strong. Yeah. I wonder, how yeah. is it for you just like hearing some of those things? Yeah. Um, what was that part of the brain? Articular, reticular. Reticular um, activating that's system. That's the one. It sounds like a dinosaur. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe <laughs> it is. <laughs> or whatever. Um, so that was looking for patterns. So as soon as I started reading the positivity there, I looked back on my life and looked for patterns of people being positive to me because um, I started picking up on positive yeah. patterns. And I'm not kidding. I have got so many, be like not even linked to that, but yeah. historically people have been extraordinarily beautiful to me and I failed to see it. And people have been so nice historically to me and all stuff started coming back like, People have said such nice things. It's like, I didn't even think about that. I just thought about the negativity. So um, the comments triggered me to look for all the positivity. And I just people are that nice to me. And I did know it, but I didn't know it. Yeah. I didn't link it, but I was always aware that people were like, say stuff like, it's like, it's almost like they like me. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> not just they like you, that it's also that you impact them. Yeah. Because what you're doing, it's brave going into therapy anyway, but it's even more brave doing it on camera. Because our inner critic's story is if people saw the real us, they would they would reject us and hate yeah. us. Yeah. And what you've done is you've put the real you out there in a very vulnerable way. And the opposite has happened. That people have felt connected to you. Yeah. And people have 
rooted for you, are rooting for you. People have seen themselves in you. And you have, despite your inner critic telling you that you're worthless and useless and whatever else, you have been, you are being a, in a sense, a shining light for other people to show them what's possible for them. What do you think? Yeah, um, mixed emotions. Yeah, I'm trying not to. Uh, trying to hold it together. Oh, I'm trying <laughs> yeah, to hold it together. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. I'm just going to nod. Yeah. Because what's also interesting in in my reflection as well is that those comments aren't going away, They're not going anywhere. And so, as you said a little bit earlier, yeah. when you need to remind yourself, because your inner critic doesn't has won't forget to do its thing. Yeah, yeah. It gets a little bit quieter. You get a bit more distance. You get better at spotting it. Yeah. But it's not going to forget. Yeah. So the key for you is also for you to remember. Yeah. And to if you if it's helpful to go back and to yeah. to not just remind yourself of what we talked about. Yeah. But to remind yourself of of your courage and how other people see your courage. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, the audience, for watching and being a part of the series. There have been far too many comments to have read them all to Haley in the session, but I know she's been reading them and been deeply touched, as have the team and I. And if you are someone who also has a loud inner critic, shifting your focus to your positive experiences is a powerful way to counteract the negative bias of your inner critic. And this is something you can come back to when you are being attacked. And if you'd like to dive deeper into this, please do visit intherapy.alexhoward.com where you will find the bonus resources for each of Haley's sessions and the homework accompanying episode four will help you dive deeper into this. Let's talk about what's not yet where you'd like it to be. Yeah. So one of the, the themes that has, one of the most challenging pieces um, for you is your relationship with your mum. Yeah. And I wonder how that's been in the, in the sort of, I guess it's, is it about six weeks since I last saw you? Yeah. Like, um, yeah. I'm wondering how, yeah. how that's been. Um, <clears throat> And I, the true answer, not the right answer. Yeah, I know you're sitting here yeah. thinking, oh, it's all great, it's all wonderful. Yeah. Like, I really yeah. want to know where it's I, at. It's, it's got to be true. Yeah. It's got to be real. Yeah, because, that's what I want to know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've said to her, if she says something that isn't fair, you, that's one chance, one chance moment. If you say it again, I'm out. Mm. And I felt really bad. I felt like I was weaponizing power against her like it felt like but but then I thought no I'm I'm protecting myself so it wasn't a weapon it was a shield yeah so um good distinction yeah it, it is hard it, it is hard it's it's an ongoing battle um I saw her fighting with my dad and she actually um spit spat in his face and went to hit him and, uh, you know, you're talking about the anger. And I was like, right. And I sat with the anger for a minute because it's my dad and I love him. I just sit with the anger and I thought, I need to use this elegantly. I need to feel it and use it elegantly. Yes. Not, not going to saying, you stupid. So, but I did feel it. I was like, yeah, I'm angry that you spat in his face. Can I, can I just celebrate you feeling angry? Yeah. Because one of the things that, I remember us talking about in the early parts of our sessions was just not feeling anger. Yeah. And particularly not feeling anger when a boundary is violated. Yeah. And I think that's a real sign of progress. Yeah. That not only did you feel the anger, yeah. but you were able to let the anger give you some strength yeah. to be able to respond in an appropriate way. And you weren't just acting yeah. out the anger, yeah. but you were letting that that power arise within you. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the interesting distinction for me is if she'd done it to me, I wouldn't have felt it. But because she did it to my dad, and I did, I, I was mentally making a note saying if she'd done that to me, I would have taken it. Because she did it to my dad, I was like, don't do that to my dad. Mm. And there was that distinction, and I guess an ideal 
I'd, uh, ideal place for me to be was to feel angry if she did it to me. And, um, and, and tell me about, though, where you are standing up for you, because it sounds like there are yeah. also examples where, yeah. like you were saying, saying to your mum, one more time and I'm, I'm yeah. gone. I mean, it's quite unfortunate because we're driving down the D road and I'm thinking, one more time and I'm out and I'm thinking, oh, shit. Could be a bit <laughs> inconvenient in the car. <laughs> well, Pete was driving, mum was in the front, I was in the back. She was shouting at me because she wanted me to go to Tesco Petrol and I went to Asda Petrol and she was ripping me apart and I was thinking, I'm really glad this has happened because this shows the ridiculousness yeah. of, of... It's very sad in a way because it shows how unstable my mum is at the moment, but it shows the ridiculousness of, of me taking a battering for such a silly thing. So I just said to her... Well, it shows that it's got nothing to do with the substance of the the content of the yeah, argument. Yeah. And it's everything to, everything to do with the dynamics in the relationship. Yeah. I did say I was in the back seat and um, I did say, if you do it once more, I'm out. And I'm looking thinking, am I out? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> I'm out, I'm out. And, and all credit to Pete because um, if I saw somebody attack him, I'd have them. Mm. <laughs> all credit to Pete that he, he has the emotional maturity to not add fuel to the fire and he just sits through it and he's not facilitating her abuse but he's respecting my rights my autonomy over that relationship so all credit to Pete that was a big weird one didn't tell I articulate that well <laughs> yeah, that's pretty smooth, really, pretty smooth. on no sleep come on that, that was pretty good <laughs> I'll, I'll give you some points for that, <laughs> that. Uh, and now, now I don't know what I'm on about well you know your relationship with your mum has been the same way for so many years yeah the it takes time to reteach her how to treat you. Mm. And the important thing is you are doing that. Mm. And I want to encourage you to keep going. Mm. There's, a, there's a really big distinction. Sorry, did I interrupt mm. you then? No, go on. Sorry. Are you okay? I, I have to grab the thoughts while they're flashing past because yeah, yeah. they're going that quick. Um, the stuff that she's saying isn't sticking anymore. Okay. So whatever she's talking, it isn't sticking. It used to stick, but it's not sticking now. So it's progress. Um, there, are, there are areas that need massive amounts of work. Um, and there are areas where I'm still very broken. It's important to be real, isn't it? Yeah. There's so many areas that I'm in pieces. But it, like I think you said before, once you see something, you can't unsee it. Yeah. So the stuff that she's thrown at me is not sticking. Good. Um, which needed to happen. Tell me a bit more about the places where you still feel broken yeah i i um want to go in and still make their world right i, I want to heal their pain and it grieves me mm. and i i know you can't can you we, we but i want to be the best that i can be to make their lives better really and um i'm going in with more emotional maturity now and with a calmer system mm. So I hope to be more effectual in that situation. Um, but it still breaks me. You know, I can't sit here and say, you know, everything's right because it isn't. Yeah. But, it, but it's a work in progress and it's only the beginning of it really, isn't it? it? It is, but it's a journey that's got momentum. And I guess part of what I'm wondering is what what's going to help you stay on track yeah. with that journey? For me, a big one is creating a, an environment that is nurturing and being around the right people that is mm. so that makes sense yeah and when a boundary is being crossed to remember that it's your right to have that boundary yeah and when she's making you responsible for her feelings remembering that you're not and just because the same story has been told for decades doesn't make it true. Yeah. 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 There's lots and lots of stories in society that are common belief structures that are fundamentally flawed and wrong. Yeah. And you've, but she's sold a narrative that you've believed for many, many years. Part of what's been changing is you don't, you don't really believe it anymore. And you just have to be careful to not get sucked in for the moment or in that instant start to get pulled into the old narrative of, oh, it's my fault or she can't help or she can't do it on her own or I've got to help her. And to be able to really get that separation. Yeah. Because if your happiness and your well-being is dependent upon her 
you're never fully going to be happy and, and, yeah. and well in the ways yeah. that you deserve to be. Yeah. It, it's, I've got to work on it. I've got to keep, I've got to keep with it. It's, yeah. I think also what's important here is the tendency after a while is going to be to start to go into a bit of a, a kind of cruise mode, a maintenance mode with it. But it's one of those things that if you're not actively working on it, yeah it'll slip back. Yeah. So it's not like you can take a few steps forwards and then stop because it'll there's so much momentum from her side, it'll just push it back to where it was yeah. before. Yeah. So it has to be an, an an active process of pushing back. Yeah. And reinstating those boundaries and reminding yourself it's okay to have those boundaries and and challenging the ways that she she pushes them and Unfortunately, you're just going to have to keep actively doing that because I don't think there's going to be a point that she's suddenly just going to completely change her behaviour. So you're going to have it. You're going to have to keep working at it. Yeah, and being aware of it, watching yeah. out for it. Yeah, it's awareness and it's action. Yeah, you know, it's awareness of this is what's going on right now. Yeah, and then it's action in terms of actually doing something about yeah. it. Yeah. But as we know from the comments. And as you know, for your own experience, you're gutsy and you're strong and you can do it. What do you fear that could happen that could throw you off track? I think I ought to be proactive in, get, in surrounding myself around the, the supportive people. Because I know the stuff that brings me down is like loneliness and yes. lack of direction and nothing to do. And they start to suck me down. And then as soon as my mental health goes, I, I, I'm more susceptible to everything else. So it is about me being really proactive about um, surrounding myself with positive people and the right yes. uh, positive things that I like doing. So I, I started back at college. That's so, great. Yeah. So That's great. I, yeah. I kind of um, went rather than progressing to the next level, I kind of went sideways. Um, and it's it's right, really positive. I really like the, the, the learning and stuff. So I've, I put a load of stuff together for, for me to do that is nurturing, nurturing me. So I'm back at college and I still see my old college friends as well. Um, so we've like got some concert tickets to go and see different things. That's and great. Stuff like that. So I think that community is really important uh, for absolutely. you. I've, absolutely. You see me wither when I'm on my own and it's people is the most important thing to me. L last time I saw you, you'd also had three job offers. Yeah. Well, I, how did that play out? I know. I um I it was not right for me at that time and I I don't I don't want to um I could have taken them but I didn't want to because it didn't feel right. Yes. It didn't sit with me and it's like I I something inside me went no. Yeah, it's not right for me at this moment because it was burdening myself and I want to be free. Yeah. So it's that sort of you know, the locus of evaluation, is it? So we get extra points for that. It's a good, it's a good <laughs> yeah. thing. I'm quite impressed. It's that, that inner bit of me that says, no, and uh, there's a strong awareness of, yeah, I can do it, but I'm not going to saddle myself yeah. with it because, uh, you know, I might, we might want to go traveling or something. Mm. So, um, but yeah, the, the, the biggest thing for me, just going back to your question, was uh, uh, what could throw me off track is I've really got to stay on top of those things that really nurture me, and that is community. Yeah. It's community. And, and, you know, and that may even be doing some sort of volunteer work where you have, yeah. you're not so tied in. You're not yeah. expected to have to always do, yeah. you know, several shifts yeah. every, like you can have a bit more freedom around yeah. it that yeah. gives you some direction, purpose, and contribution. Yeah. But it gives you that within community. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's when I start to go when I'm isolated and I've got nothing to do because I'm like really sort of um, like like doing loads of things and different yeah. things and challenging myself and stuff. Um, so that's the most, the best thing that I can do for me. Yes. A hundred percent, yeah. Good. What questions do you have for me? I, like the inner critic's hammering me, so I'm going to bat it back. But yeah. I'm, 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 I'm re can I just say it and then I'll feel, I'm, I'm really sorry if I've let you down, not articulated. I am so tired. I'm so That's sorry. Okay. You I don't just have to apologise. Yeah, it's okay. I've sort of, uh, all I can do is be completely honest with you. I'm absolutely yeah. shattered and I'm sorry that I didn't articulate. No, you did. I think <laughs> just, I, it's funny because your inner critic story about you not being articulate, I think you're remarkably articulate. Oh, like, thank you. 
you know, if if I don't think I'd be awake if I hadn't slept for a couple of days. So yeah. I fully understand where you're yeah. at. And yeah. you know the the progress is real. And you know, you're it's not the work's not done, but the work's never done in yeah. this kind of work. But yeah. the key thing is you keep working at it. Yeah. And the more that you do that, the more that you're training yeah. relationships to be different and your relationship with yourself yeah. to be different. The, the, yeah, the, the end of cricket, critic is always like whack-a-mole with me. Yeah. It, it, it's, I made a list once when it was like 72 within an hour or something. So the end of critic saying, you're letting Alex down, you're not you're not answering articulate. You're on the wrong room, you know. Yeah. And you can tell it to fuck off. And yeah. the good news is you don't believe it the way that you used to. Yeah, she says, yeah. And <laughs> so... Yeah, it is, it is hard because I am a people pleaser. That's the trouble with me. I'll be yeah. like, I'll do anything, you know. And and it, I was aware of that when I came into this process thinking you need to be real, not just say the answers that people want That's to right. hear. Because it, it's, if it's not real, it's a disservice to everyone involved. That's it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I am being real, but I... I am still struggling with the inner critic and I do again apologize for not articulating and, and you know it, it, it's it's a ongoing piece of yeah. work yeah you know I've been working with inner critic for 20 years yeah and it's not as loud as it used to be it doesn't have the influence it used to have yeah but it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't just yeah. disappear yeah but what changes that dynamic is that you keep working at it yeah it's, it, that's a tough one but yes yeah good I'd love to do this again in sort of a little bit in the future, like three, four months or something at time. It'd be nice to check in again yeah. and see how you're doing. Yeah. Um, and you just keep doing you. I will. Thank you. You're welcome. It's really touching to see how far Haley has come in our nine sessions together. From learning to set and hold boundaries to focusing on her self-work and self-care. Hayley feels like a very different woman to the one that walked in just a few months previously. And of course, like it does for all of us, Hayley's journey continues. And my hope is that the foundations we have built together will allow her to continue to unlock her true potential. And although this week is our last session with Hayley for now, we will be returning to her story in the future. In the new year, we will be meeting our next participant. But in the meantime, I'm excited to unpack some of the key themes within Haley's sessions. And next week, we'll be sharing some of my behind-the-scenes reflections. You can also now watch Haley's full In Therapy journey here on YouTube or listen as a podcast. And to help support you in coming on the journey with us, I've been creating some materials to accompany the series. In this week's reflections, you can explore what helps you build momentum in your inner life and how to keep your own inner work on track. And you can find these resources for free at intherapy.alexhoward.com. Thank you again for coming on Haley's journey with us. I look forward to talking with you more next week.